Hi, I'm Lana Kelly, and this is Hudson Valley Art Speak. Thank you for tuning in today. We're going to be talking to photographer Dawn O'Crean today, and Dawn is an iPhoneographer, and she um, works taking photos of, uh, well, well, we'll talk about it, a variety of things, and then she does some magical adjustments and, and just transforms what she's doing. Dawn, thanks for coming today. Hi, Lana. Thank you for having me. Great. So, um, how long have you been doing uh, iPhoneography? Probably only for the last few years. I, I completely bucked having an iPhone for many years until one of my friends at work was tired of watching me with a flip phone <laughs> and about three years ago gave me hers. <laughs> oh, really? So you inherited one? Yes. Yeah, and it, it just opened new doors, I guess. There's no you. going back after that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So tell me what your process is when, when, when you're out taking pictures and, and where you go from there. Well, in general, I also use uh, two cameras that I adore. Um, one's an old sidekick, it's a Canon, and one is a new Panasonic Lumix, which is mirrorless. So everyone has their function, and then there's the iPhone, which sometimes neither of my cameras are going to do the job for me. So let me just say, so you're working with the DSLRs also? Yes. Oh, I, okay. I thought you were just working with the iPhone. I work with everything I can get my hands on. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the iPhone, though, um, is responsible for a lot of my photos, and they're easiest to edit, and you can usually tell when you're looking at a subject um, if this is going to be a good camera picture or a good iPhone picture. The, the iPhone can seem to adjust the light better and quicker, and you can focus better sometimes. But as far as grain goes, you might want to use a regular camera. So my photos are a, a mishmash of everything. Okay. Okay. So do you carry all of them? Uh, generally. You do? <laughs> Three cameras. <laughs> I'm a pain yeah. to drive with. <laughs> so, um, okay, so you're out in the woods and, and you see something. So you make the decision then on which camera to use? Right then it's most likely going to be a camera, not an iPhone, if it's an animal or a bird because they're not going to stand there and go, oh, wait, I'll let you get closer with your iPhone. So I need to get a zoom lens going or something just to capture as best as I can. Right. And if they're patient enough or not spooked, I can stand there even longer and really start fiddling with everything. But in general, they're not going to hang around. So no iPhone for that unless it's uh, flowers, trees. Things like that, trees are my favorite. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about trees, let's talk about that tree picture that, um, the, the picture in Amenia. Oh, yes, yes. That one is an apple tree, and it's a very large apple tree outside of a cemetery. And I pass it a couple times a week, and I'm just fascinated by this tree. And so I'm always trying to get the perfect picture of this tree, and I can never seem to get it. There's always some darkness or something going on. And I took a bunch of photos with the camera and with the iPhone and then decided to do a bunch of processing with it to see what I could do with it, and which transformed the photo from what it was into something that people more or less would rather look at. It's a dramatic difference. It is a dramatic difference. Um, what I try to do, my job for me, my self-imposed job, is to, if I'm going to force you to look at my stuff on Facebook and Instagram, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to do my best to get a reaction out of you. I want, oh, wow, or yeah. I want, uh, you know, maybe melancholy or even sadness, sorry, but <laughs> I want emotion. I don't want you to ever see a photo of mine and go, oh, it's a landscape. I... If I'm going to take a picture of Route 22, I want you to see Narnia. If, um, you know, it just has to be, if it's going to be a tree, I need you to see not a tree. I need you to see a being. I need you to see a being that's been there for so many years. It's seen things. It has secrets. It knows so much that it could put people in jail. You know, these things have been there for so long. And I just like them to look like they have secrets right. because really we're learning that trees function with their own language underground. We don't see it. So right. there's and a they lot can of hidden stuff there. Yes, they communicate. So I believe as we're looking at them, there's stuff going on. I know it sounds crazy, but <laughs> no, I love that. <laughs> so I need them to come off as majestic or controlling or sad or even scary. 
yeah. in a way. Yeah. There's, there's a, a shot in the woods, uh, a, a snowy shot in the woods that, that, um, <laughs> that, that you really transformed. I mean, the first is, you know, it's okay, but, but yeah. whatever you did to it makes it look magical, makes it look like a, a, a snowy tunnel with birds in the sky. That's our, um, what was it, a, a photobomb genesis, Grayson, uh, that storm we had just recently. And that's actually our driveway. Oh, really? And it's our road, and it's very long. And the picture is like, yay, trees and snow. But then when you throw it into Snapseed and maybe hit the HDR a little, adjust the drama, um, try to sap out some of the color and make it more magical. And like I said, that's my job, is to make it magic, is to make it pretty. I'm giving you what my mind sees. I'm not giving you what the camera sees. I'm giving you what I see when I look at something. Um, and I, I try to do that with everything. Yeah, yeah. One of the, one of the pictures that made me say, wow, <laughs> was um, you did some barns mm -hmm. at Lakeside Park. And, and the original picture is a beautiful picture with mm -hmm. very vivid colors and a, a blue and white sky, very yes. pretty. But the, the, whatever you did to transform it was just like, wow. Well, that's to me adding the emotion to it. I can give you a barn with colors and it's like all the other barns ever. But when I start messing with it and putting a little old touch to it, like a, just trying to give it a little character. Otherwise, it's just another barn, a pretty barn, a postcard barn. But I want it to be a barn with feelings. Mm -hmm. So I try to do different things to it. That's a grunge effect that's uh -huh. on Snapseed. And it doesn't work for everything. And sometimes post-processing doesn't even work for everything. You just go waste a half hour going, well, the original's best. Yeah. But on that one, I really liked, really liked doing that. I know when I first started doing post-processing, I thought I was cheating. I was like, mm, I'm never going to do that. And then one day, accidentally hit the autocorrect. You're like, oh, oh <laughs> the gateway drug to post-processing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was from the school of thought where even Jack Kerouac said the first draft is the original. It's the one with the feeling. It's the inspiration. Don't touch it. Don't change it. And I was like, yeah. And then I was like, no, autocorrect. Yeah. And then no, Snapseed and Pick yeah. Monkey and all these things to bring the magic to the image so that you're not just looking at a building, now you're looking at maybe a haunted building. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a dead tree with maybe, you know, some, some aura around it. Yeah, I, it was interesting when, when you're talking about that, how I, I when, when you gave me um, your name for the credits, you put photographic artist. You yes. didn't put photographer. So I, I think it, there's a, a big <laughs> difference there. It is. It's a transformation. Instead of just taking, which I can take just a photo, I will. But even you know, anyone who sits with me, and I've got the camera in my hand, my iPhone. After I take a picture, now now I need. To, I can't even just put it on Facebook or check us in anywhere. Me and my boyfriend without being like, well. Hold on, I gotta make it pretty, and then I'll put it up half hour later. We're about to leave, I'm still playing with the picture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell me, what um, what apps are you using? Snapseed is huge. Snapseed's free. Yeah. It's amazing. You can transform anything. Um, Pick Monkey's another one, and you do get some really good um, benefits to that. But if you want everything, you do have to pay a, a yearly or a monthly, which is not that expensive, and I think it's worth it. Um, those are my two mains. I don't really mess around with the iPhone filters as much because they're just kind of boring to me. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it. Those are my two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, you said you have an Instagram feed and you do Facebook, so that those are two places where people can see yep. these pictures? Gazing Raven Photography. Um, on Facebook, handle on Instagram is Gazing Raven. And there's a blog on WordPress, Gazing Raven Photography. <laughs> I think it's dot wordpress.com. <laughs> so it carries, and, and the three of them don't usually carry the same thing at once. Um, I'll get to one and then maybe get to the other. Right, right, right. And um, any new d direction in your work? I, I, a lot of the pictures that you sent to me were of nature or nature related things, mm -hmm. trees, 
um, snow scenes, and, yes. but, but you also have, here you have, and behind us you have a raven, and you have a coyote, mm -hmm. which is a little bit different. Well, what's fun about the coyote is that anybody is capable of taking a bad picture, and when you do, you can turn it into something. So that coyote was supposed to be, oh, I'm going to get a picture of a coyote in the wild. You know, my boyfriend and I are out chasing, not chasing it, but he's like creeping up on it, getting good shots. <laughs> I'm getting the most terrible shots with the sun falling in at a bad spot. And what I looked at is like, this is just, this is not a good coyote photo. And I was disappointed. And then I decided, it's got, the way the sun's hitting, it's making a little Monet-ish to me. And so I decided to, or Picasso, you know, with those swirls. Yeah. So I decided to go into an app and play with it and make it look more painting-ish than photo-ish. And I fell in love with it. I've actually sold it for $100. Oh, really? So it, it, you know, it just feels good to be like, wow, that's the most expensive mistake I've ever sold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's never a mistake, though. You know, you're there, you caught it, and you were able to do something with it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to get creative with it. Yeah. Um, what's in front of you. Yeah, yeah. And the crow? Edgar Allan Crow. That is, I, I used to feed the crows at the cemetery. For a price, they literally work for peanuts. Yeah. You can, they'll let you photograph them, of course, if you can get them to stay still. They'll wait till you walk away to eat their food. So while they're waiting for you to walk away, they're settling down on things, which is when I can just snap a bunch of pictures. Yeah. They trust me and then walk away, let him have their food. So he landed on a stone, funny enough, the stone behind him. My stepfather noticed is my mom's name, and my mom noticed this, the stone that he's on is her husband's name. So uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, really? I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe it was a setup shot or you had, you know, put two photographs together. Just working with nature yeah. on that one. Yeah. Just working with, yeah. you know, those those lucky moments where you can communicate with, with beings and they don't speak English, you don't speak crow, but right. you work it out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so do you ever do people, um, photograph people? Well, I'll use my, my youngest as a model at times, but not in the way you think. I like to use her as something I call hashtag my daughter is creepy Ugh. and she hates it sometimes but um, she reminds me of she has this very long brown hair and she can look like the girl from the ring sometimes uh -huh. so we like to set her up in the woods way be like far away so you just kind of see her figure and her stringy hair and kind of make them scary looking for <laughs> like how old is she she's 19 yeah she's being a good sport if yeah you like give her some sort of, you know, compensation, yeah. she'll, she'll do it. But um, that I think would be fun to work with as a theme. But in the meantime, I have Twisted Beauty, which is a take on things that some people might see as kind of dark or have a dark lining. Um, but you can find a lot of beauty in those things. Yeah. Yeah. And so the calendar features um, things like doll heads with their eyes poked out, found yeah. outside or... yeah. And I'm just going to say that people could um, check you out on Instagram or yep. Facebook, and if they're interested in your calendar, they can get in touch with you. They can get in touch there. with me. Yep, just send yeah. me a message. Um, time's up for us. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me.